the Shanghai Master Snooker, the first to 10 frames to play Sean Murphy for the title. Thank you. The first break. And after Ronnie the customary pre-match handshake, it's Ronnie O'Sullivan to get us underway in frame one. Nine in this session. Usual interval after four. Yes, and the trademark left-handed break from O'Sullivan. For reasons only he knows, I suppose. And Robertson has looked good in his matches this week. You know, he finished last season well. Going into the World Championships, he was playing good snooker. During the World Championships, he was playing the first week or two. Looked by far and away the best player on show. And he ran into John Higgins, the sublime match player. Um, took a break, understandably, after his most successful season. And I think he's come back looking OK. But this is his biggest test. And there's an argument is also Sullivan's biggest test for a while. I'd like to call this match. You know, that's a very good part from Sullivan. Fortunately, for him, the pink to the middle is clearly blocked by the red. Yes, it's a. Uh, it is genuinely a test for both players. I mean, I don't know where O'Sullivan's game is at right now. It's hard to, to gauge on the two matches so far. It's a bit lucky in the end to beat Kyron Wilson, who really should have won that match. He beat a wild card before 6 0. So, a best of 19 against someone who's clearly a world class player who he did get the better of a couple of times last year. We'll find out if Ronnie O'Sullivan is back to that sort of form, won't we, this, uh, this afternoon and this evening. Yes, he seemed down and out, didn't he, in his match against Kyron Wilson. Four down with five to play, and Wilson, as you say, had many opportunities to close that match out. He couldn't take them. Sullivan himself described it as a weird match. Of course, he was delighted to come through. But you suspect that he will have to raise his game to get the better of Robertson, who's had a pretty serene passage in contrast. Fairly comfortable wins over both Ding Zhongwei and Barry Hawkins to get this far. Well, this red goes, but it's not easy. That is a better shot than it looks. We saw that from Hawkeye, you know, the player view of the shot in a very acute angle to the middle. seen that from O'Sullivan before. I fancy that cup will be filled with hot water. Keep his hands nice and warm. I remember on one occasion O'Sullivan was counting the spots on the back of a spoon when he wasn't at the table playing shots as a way of maintaining concentration. May have been a match I was commentating on actually at the venue. It was that might have been York, might have been the UK Championship when he was bored. Um, as sometimes happens when you're out there, whoever you are. Not an easy safety shot, this, because you've got the green, the blue and that red to the right of the table that could get in the way. He's such a fine safety player. He's done well to get back there. I want to say very good morning if you're watching in the UK or in Europe because some people will have got up to watch a match like this. If you're a real snooker fan, you're probably up bright and early seeing who wins out of O'Sullivan Robertson. Good morning to you if you're doing that. Of course, you might be watching from Australia because your man Neil Robertson is uh, there. This is the Ashes number two. Of course, if you're in Australia, you've already won the, the Ashes back.
But this is the kind of match, Philip, that will attract interest anywhere you are in the world. It's, it's the meeting of, of two top players who will lock horns for place in the final. It's very much a global game these days. 19 ranking events being contested this season. A further six invitational events, of which this is one, the most lucrative now. More than £750,000 at stake. As O'Sullivan pops the red, but again, doesn't get prime position. One. And all of that snooker being played over 11 different territories, so truly is global interest, particularly when two of the biggest hitters in the game are going head-to-head -head for a place in a final. Well, what does he do here? Brown is not available to pot because the red in front of it it's below the pink spot's clearly in the way. I suppose you could cut the black in conceivably. I think it will cut, but he's, you know it's the kind of risk he's unlikely to want to take at this point. I mean, the table is okay. If a chance was to come, the reds are spread and the colours are all out in open play. Ronya Sullivan won. The first final they contested last season, the Tour Championship was a pretty handsome win for O'Sullivan. Robertson didn't do much wrong, actually, but still lost heavily 10-4. The Tour Championship final was a different story. That was nip and tuck all the way, really. Robertson had been 6-3 down, levelled at 10 all. And that is a fantastic pot from Robertson from long range. Very much his speciality, particularly in his early days when there were still a few rough edges to the other facets of his game, but his long potting has always been outstanding. Yeah, so Sullivan winning by 13-11 in the end in that Tour Championship final. It was a great match, though. Six. Seven. Yes, the red that he potted at the beginning of this break will certainly give him confidence. He couldn't have queued it any better. 12. And like I said, at the time, there was uh, plenty on. It's only five reds or so in open play. I think the one up by the brown is very gettable on for a left-hander as well, if he wanted to. That'll, that'll do him. I'm sure it's exactly how he played it, but <laughs> it's fine. Nineteen. Robertson won three ranking titles in a single season for the first time in his career. 2018-19 proved to be a very lucrative one. 753,000 and change. Well, he's always started the season well, hasn't he? That's the thing. It, often he's won an early tournament, Robertson, usually Riga, and uh, not always you know, gone on with it. But last year he just kept going. 
And, but for Sullivan, he'd want a lot more. So he's taken everything that was out in the open. Well, that's a good angle, at least, on this red. Of course, he's not easy along there. But at least... He'd be playing it fairly slowly to get out for the black. And that's why it was a good shot, I think. Now the red up the table I was speaking about earlier on. He could land on that top right-hand cushion, somewhere where he's about to queue up. And of course, with the brown there at hand as well, it's easy. It means him pulling the red, he'll have not much to do for, to regain position. That looks A1 to me. 48. I think a good start is imperative for Robertson. He's largely been on the wrong end of things against O'Sullivan in the past. Well, he's looking here at what he needs, and it'll be red, and it'll be, of course, the brown, and one more red, and that'll be the first frame under his belt. 49. My guess is the right hand red is the one he'll play on, swinging the cue ball around, trying to miss, just miss the yellow and take it off the left cushion across to the right for that red out on its own. Well, he, of course, he's a left hander, so this time it doesn't suit him. So this could be missed, actually. 53. If, it, if he doesn't miss it, then O'Sullivan needs a snooker. First mobile phone of the day, not the last, I should think. Yeah, it wasn't as easy as the previous. So there's just a, a glimmer for Ronnie O'Sullivan here. Mathematically, he can win, but the balls are awkward. Fifty nine still available, fifty two the deficit for O'Sullivan. What a delightful shot. The balls are not as awkward now. The colours never were, but it was just the reds. And he just glanced off a couple. That was cleverly played. Now that was not a good shot. He played hit screw that off the cushion and he knew he'd be on the other one. Eight. Somehow he's got behind it. Well, interesting there. It, the options are to play safe from the, the safe red and get that into play and give himself a good chance. But I think this plant is what he's looking at. And if he plays it, he's not easy. This is going to have to be a very good safety shot. Any other option I can think of would be cushion first on the bottom red to pot it. Here's the big shot. That looks pretty good to me. Eight. I've seen a lot worse than that. What he has done is opened up the table. And now there's nothing safe. and he's more than happy to see pink and black away from their spots.
Robertson only needs a red to leave O'Sullivan requiring a snooker. Potted a great one to get in for his initial break. Not quite so accurate this time. Another one that has to go in. 43 is the difference now. If he misses this, then he can only tie the frame, but he's got to pop this really. No idea that went in. I know he gave it every chance, but that hit the bottom jaw. That shouldn't have dropped. Eight. Well, that will give him confidence for this shot if the last one can go in along the other cushion. Struck that one a lot more cleanly. Yeah, I mean, that black. I'm not one of the people that goes on about the pocket sizes, but how on earth did that go in? Six. I know it wriggled and just about dropped in, but well, I was always led to believe if you hit one as badly as that, it stays on the tape. And those small margins can be crucial, can't they, at this level? Now, if he wins his frame, then there is some great significance to that going in. Anyhow, still got to do it, and the pink will be an obvious problem, really. Twenty. It will be a hurtful frame for Robertson to lose. He's had a couple of shots at frame ball. Twenty-five. Yeah, I think if the blue was on its spot, blue to pink would be a little easier. He could play the cannon, but from where the blue is, it's quite a hard shot to either get in behind the pink or move it. If anyone can. The man at the table can. Such a creative player. But trust me, this is not an easy shot to play. It just didn't feel right. It felt so like the cannon was very difficult to get, but he's very much in there. getting involved early well the black's even more difficult I think this is a horrible shot and this if he misses this and gets close to it it stays over the pocket <laughs> what a clearance Philip what a dramatic start to our second